Okay, experimental designs, what are they? What do you need to know? Uh, experimental designs are how your participants are put together within your study. Um, the name and the title kind of gives it away, so this is when we're talking about experiments. So if you've got a laboratory experiment, a field experiment, natural experiment, you need to know how your groups are going to be made up, and that's what we mean by experimental design. Um, experimental designs are often confused with experimental methods or, or research methods. Research designs are confused with research methods. So when we talk about a design, it's talking about, yeah, how your participants are put together, and there are three that you need to be aware of. So it's either an independent measure design, a repeated measure design, or a matched pairs design. Um, when we talk about research methods, that is a way of gathering data. So the the answer to what is the research method here question would be it's a lab experiment or it's a type of observation or it's self-report. So that's the first thing to be aware of. When you're asked which research design was used, the answer is very specific and actually really you're, you're only looking at one of these three answers, independent measures, repeated measures or matched pairs. So one, now we've established that, we need to know what these things are. So an independent measure design is where you have a separate group of participants per condition of the study. That's quite important. Quite often I see this referred to as, oh, you've got two separate groups. Well, kind of true, kind of not. That's only true if there are two levels of the IV, um, which quite often there are, but sometimes there are more. So you need to know that actually it's a separate group per level of the IV. And what I mean by that, think about Loftus and Palmer study. If you've looked at memory, this will be, you'll be aware of it. If you haven't, there was a study done by Loftus and Palmer where they looked at a car crash. They got participants to look at a car crash. And then afterwards they asked them how fast was the car going when it, and then there were five levels of the, of the IV, hit, bumped, smashed, contacted, collided. And they had a different group of participants per verb that was used. Um, and they needed to do that. And so that would have been a, a good example of an independent measure design where you've got more than two groups. So that's why, again, you just need to be careful if you sell uh, independent measure design is where you've got two different groups. Not technically, it's where you've got a separate group per condition of the experiment. A repeated measure design is where all of your participants do all of the conditions of the study. So this is where you've got the same group of participants and they're taking part in all the different conditions of the study. Um, and so they would do um, one test first and uh, then the other test next. So an example I've seen of this is where there was a, an exam question and it asked about running speed and whether listening to music improved running speed or not. They used a repeated measure design here. They got participants to run with music to begin with um, and tested their, their speed over 400 meters and then got them to run without music and looked at the difference. Um, so you've got all participants using uh, being used in both conditions of the study they're on each condition of the study. Finally, you've got a match pairs design. That's almost uh, in the middle of the two. It's where you've got separate conditions, yes, but you try to match those participants in those conditions on certain key characteristics. Um, and that becomes clear when we start looking at the strengths and weaknesses. So now you know what the, the three different designs are, you're less likely to be asked that question, what is a repeated measure design? What is an independent measure design? The way you generally get assessed on this is being able to identify it, being able to apply it. So AO2, you might get given a STEM, a scenario question, a hypothetical study, and asked to identify the design being used there. Um, and again, you need to look at whether the, the participants are taking part in all conditions of study when you do that. Or you're going to get asked to evaluate, is this a good method to use or not? Or why have they used this method? And, and to look at that, you need to know about your strengths and weaknesses um, of these different designs. And they might have already come to you when I was describing what they were. So if we go back to our independent measure design, we've got a separate group of participants per condition of the study. Again, that Loftus and Palmer one, where we've got a different word being used. Well, um, the problem with doing that, using the same participants for each of those words, they would have figured out what the aim of the study was. Um, and so that would have affected the results. Or they could have got tired or bored by the end. And so that's known as what we call order effects. That's another key term here. So key terms you need to know are the, obviously the three different types of design, but also in the evaluations here. So 
order effects are you don't get order effects if you have an independent group's designs and that's why they did that in the Loftus and Palmer study they didn't want their participants to be figuring out hang on a minute I've seen the same car crash here and you just asked me one word different they'd figure out the aim of the study um, or they get bored um, or tired so there's no order effects and there's no fatigue but it's not all good um, and the biggest problem is individual differences so what you've got are different groups of people but that then means that you're going to have different characteristics for those people and that could affect the result as well. So if someone's eyesight is poorer in one group than the other, that might affect how they've seen the car crash and so that could have affected their results. And from a research methods researcher point of view, a good tip for the research methods section is you need to put yourself in the shoes of a researcher. Why would I want to do something or wouldn't want to do something? Well, if you're doing independent measures design, you need twice or three times or four times or five times as many people as you would if you had one uh, study where they were all your participants were doing the all the conditions of the experiment and actually what you then get if we look at the repeated measure design where you've got the same participants actually doing that you, obviously the the strengths and weaknesses are opposite so actually for a repeated measure design well you don't get that individual differences so for that study where we had the same participants listening to music and running and they're not listening to music and running well that's great because actually running ability is taken out of the equation it doesn't matter how good or bad they are you could have Usain Bolt at one end um, and actually it doesn't matter that he's really really good at running because actually what you're testing is whether the music changed that again it doesn't matter if you've got some lard ass who can't run uh, because actually you're you're measuring the um, the change in running speed with, with the music so there's no individual differences again another term you need to be aware of here strengths and weaknesses so one term is about order effects that's the effect of doing the study in a particular order the other is individual differences so you've got yeah individual characteristics where well, you don't have that in a repeated measure design because they're the same people being tested against each other you need all oh, poor english there sorry fewer people you need fewer people in your study um so that was a weakness of the independent is that you need more well here you need fewer so that's good um, and then also another term here you can counterbalance that study as well so one problem with getting everyone to listen to music first and then run and then listen to no music and run is that actually the second time they might have again got bored they might have uh, there could have been an effect if I give you another example, say I wanted to test at a school whether the students were better at football or rugby. I could get them to play a football match and score their football ability and then get them to play a rugby match and score their rugby ability. Well, they're going to be worse in the rugby match because they've just already played a football match. So you probably wouldn't do that. What you would probably do is get half of the students to play rugby first and then football and then the other half to play football first and then rugby. That's known as counterbalancing um, and that's a way of trying to get over um, the the issues that you sometimes get with a repeated measure design if they're doing one test first and then the other however you will get order effects so they are all going to play rugby and football so there's no way of getting over that and again the running ability one there's going to be a, a difference isn't there um, the second time they do it regardless of of when they do it finally we've got our match pairs design and this is it's meant to be the best of both worlds so you have got the different groups which is great because you don't have the order effects there so it controls for order effects but what you try to do is you try to match the participants up on the key characteristics that could affect the dv um, and so you're trying to reduce the individual differences so you're trying to get over the two strengths and weaknesses of the, of the other two in this one design which which you can do so if if your test is on memory you might want to test their their IQ first because that could have an effect potentially I don't know maybe on memory ability um, and so you would do a, a pre-test on IQ you would then get people of similar IQ but one in one condition one in the other and they're almost being tested against each other that's a matched pair design they're, they're matched into pairs one participant is almost being played off against the other in the, in the different conditions again you, you could have more than one condition but that makes it harder and harder that's actually the weakness so again as I said put yourself in the shoes of a, an experimenter are you going to want to do this well it will take a lot of time money and effort to do it um, and it could be worth it but actually again another problem here is that maybe it still won't be maybe you will still get those individual differences um, 
and things that you hadn't thought of that are going to affect the results. So you're going through a lot of time, money and effort to try to help, but actually you're still you're in the same position that you were in beforehand. Um, and so that's a bit of an issue. Okay, so that's a whistle top store of research designs, experimental designs.